Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and today I have sort of an eclectic haul for you. Lots of different things, and I picked them up all over the place. So we've got yard sale finds, and we have flea market stuff. So let's just get right on into it because there's a lot to get to. So the first thing I want to start with is actually some really awesome magazines. So these are Better Homes and Gardens magazines from well, mostly the 60s. I think they're actually all from the 60s. So they're really awesome. I love buying these for myself and just, I like to flip through them and see the old advertisements. But I have 22 of them here. I paid a dollar a piece. Actually, I did a bundled price, so they would have been a dollar a piece. I went up to the register and I asked 15 and he would, he didn't want to do 15, but I think I did 18. I think that's right, 18 for all. But I love the graphics. I love going through here and seeing, like, look at this. Here's an old 63 Chevy ad. Oh, it's starting to come apart at the binding. Whoopsie. That's, that's the trouble with these old magazines. Right here. Isn't that awesome? So, really fun. I really prefer the 50s and 40s magazines, but those are harder to find. And actually, those magazines, you can buy them on eBay, of course, just like anything, but you're gonna pay up for those. So the 60s, 70s, as we get newer, they're not worth as much. You can find, uh, like say, a bundle of three magazines for $5, let's call it. So that's not a, like, it's not like these things are really, really popular until you get into the 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s, better homes and gardens, then they get, a lot more desirable. Then you're talking like $10, $15 for one. So yeah, I did buy quite a bit of these. I'm gonna flip through them and I'm probably gonna end up selling them. I don't know. I, I do have some downstairs that I, well, point is I'm gonna enjoy them for a little bit and then decide what I wanna do. But uh, I, I, they're probably worth at the most $1.50 each. So I'll group them together in kind of sets that are similar by year. So that was at the flea market. I also bought a pencil sharpener at the flea market. This is a, uh, I'm trying to get this hair out of the thing. This is an old pencil sharpener, like what you'd have found in school, a knuckle cracker. Um, and it's na the name of it is Boston right here. So it's really fun. I have sold these in the past. I like this one, it has great retro lines to it. it, even has the screws, but this is really fun. So um, I'll probably sell this for about 20, maybe tiny bit more, $20 or so uh, with, sh with shipping included. So that's pretty fun and I paid a dollar. I also bought some paperweights. So I haven't bought paperweights in a while and I wanted to get these. So I have four paper, I have five, but four of them are these glass spheres. So let me show you each one separately, really pretty. They were part of a larger collection. So I will say that this company, the flea market people, what their main business is, they go and liquidate houses out and I'm pretty sure that the family pays them to do it. So they get all this stuff for free and then they turn around and they sell it at their flea market. So they, although that's hard to believe that they, somebody paid them to take all these paperweights, but I don't know, maybe they paid a really small amount. So I think there's about 500, 400 or so paperweights, glass paperweights that this family, family collected. So um, there was just only a small assortment out there the day that I was there. So I ended up buying a few. They're priced at $5. This one is $4, but this one right here is five. So let me show you the color. I'm going to sell each one of these for about $25, maybe a tiny bit more with shipping included. So the color's really pretty on that. Very, very nice. Okay, so there's that one. It's like this green and brown and white. And then this one here, I like a lot. It's this really fun, it's clear and green. And the inside is really pretty. As you can see there. So that's a nice size. That's a good size right there. 
And then this one here is sort of like a confetti. It really reminds me of an end of day lamp. If you're familiar with those, want that to focus. Has wonderful, like a sun catcher. Really, this is beautiful. This one was $4. This one is actually also marked C, C A. So I needed, I didn't do research on these things yet. And actually I think this is the only one with a mark anyway, but it says C A. These are all hand blown by the way, I mean naturally. And then this one here is really pretty. I like the color on this a lot. It's like blue, it's like a cobalt blue. Very nice. Okay, so yeah, all around maybe $25, $30 for those with shipping included. And then this one I picked up, it's not glass or anything, I think it's resin more so, but I bought it because I thought it was really fun. It's like a clock, it's like a blown apart clock. So anyone who you know, collects clocks or anything like that, I think this would be a great gift idea, it's a paperweight. So you can see all the parts and the gears and all of that. And that was only $3. I think this is a good $20 item. $20, free shipping, and it should be pretty a pretty good gift idea for um, Christmas, whatever. So that was at the flea market. What else did I get at that flea market? Was that all that I got at that flea market? I think so. Yeah, okay, so then Here's a couple things that I picked up recently at Goodwill. I'm throwing them in this video, and then I have things that I got at a yard sale. So, here are a couple of these switch plates. I think these are really fun. Love that, has this early 1900s appeal to it. Really awesome, and it's like a porcelain. It is marked Japan. So it's later, it's probably the, like the 60s time frame. Uh, yeah, and then the other one here is similar, very similar. This one has a lot more painted painted bits on it, and it looks hand painted. It's also Japan, and these were a dollar a piece, so not a bad price, really. I'm going to sell each one of these for I uh, probably like fifteen like $15 or so with free shipping. Might be a little bit more, might be like 18. I, I haven't double checked the price of this, this kind of stuff yet, but these are really fun. I like them. I think they're really pretty, especially this one with all the wonderful hand painted color. I mean, that's really pretty. So this one actually might be more, the, the colorful one. Or I might sell them together. I don't know, I'll have to double check that. And then I also bought these home interiors butterflies. So interestingly, it comes with the box. So that's the first time I've ever bought these with the box, but it's the home interiors, burnished metal tin butterfly things. So there they are from the 80s, awesome butterflies. And those do really well for me. This will probably sell for, I don't know, with the box, that's a really fun, easy thing for me to ship. Um, 20, $20 with free shipping. I can leave it in the box and on the way they go. So that's awesome. So, oh, and the other thing that I got, that, that was at Savers, by the way. The butterflies were at Savers and those uh, switch plates were at Goodwill. Then we have, I bought a bag of salt and pepper shakers. Or, yeah, they're all salt and pepper shakers. They were $2.99. And it's a set of three. Mm, salt and pepper shakers. So the first set is this wonderful set of cardinals right here. I haven't bought salt and pepper shakers in a while either. So that's really fun. They are those that hand painted Japan and this set's in great shape. So the maker on this one is actually one I've never ever heard of. Elvin, E-L-V-I-N, hand painted Japan. I'll show you that sticker because it is kind of interesting. Definitely it's something I've never seen before. So there it is. It's sort of a different kind of a label. 
there's that one and then the other one another one is the chickens i guess yeah pair of chickens and the black and the red i think those are really fun so now i think these are all going to go in the booth for three dollars three 350 a couple more things i got at the flea market uh, are these home ceramic uh halloween decorations that you would have painted yourself so we have the witch right here flying on her broomstick i did do a little research and i found out the maker of this right here and it is made by Kimple. i wrote it on the bottom it's made by Kimple molds so this would have came as a mold kit and you would have casted it yourself and then you would have painted it so i thought that was pretty interesting um so there we are with the witch uh, I guess I was under the impression that you would have bought the already molded item and then painted it. Now maybe there's different ways you could do it. Maybe you could go like completely from scratch, like in this case, or you could already buy the, mold, the bisque that you would have painted. But anyway, we have a witch right here. And the other one is this trick or treat. That, this was really adorable too with the witch. And it says trick or treat right there. So that's fun. I believe this one is also from the 70s. It's hard to tell. I could not find this one online at all. But whenever I did find this one, all I was able to find was a new in package, old stock uh, of the mold. So that was that's how I knew who it was. Uh, I'm probably going to hang on to these because it's just vintage Halloween and I like it. And we are getting a little too close this year now for me to list them. And I just want to enjoy them for a little bit longer. So... I'm not going to sell them this year, but they were a dollar a piece, so really good price. So we did go to a yard sale uh, while we were out at that flea market. And I'm going to go kind of quickly and show you some different things. I've got, oh, we did step at one other yard sale. <laughs> I'm all over the place. We stopped at one other yard sale and I bought this piece of Pyrex here. And, uh, ow, I forgot the name of this pattern. I think it's called pine cones or something. But... It's this kind of reddish orange color, mostly red, and it's a Christmas pattern. But uh, yeah, it's an open, it's a casserole, missing the lid. You can easily get a lid and, and have it, have a set. This was four dollars, not terrible. I will put this in the booth, and I I don't, I will not have any problem selling this in the booth for twenty bucks. Yeah, easily. Christmas is coming up. It's this is not a common pattern right here. So. Uh, I felt okay buying it for $4, even without the lid, but you could find the lids pretty much anywhere, so that's okay. Great piece of that. Okay, uh, then we went to the yard sale, finally. I did buy a whole like selection of tins. They were a dollar for all the tins, but the one I really wanted was this one right here because it reminded me of the 20s. And I think it is from the 20s. It's a Whitman's metal chocolate box. Really pretty. I love the graphics. It just screams Art Deco to me. Or Art Nouveau. M more, more so Art Nouveau. But it's beautiful. Oops, she's upside down. So there, it's really pretty. Uh, it's just heavily scratched up. Even in this condition, I bet it's worth all of $15. I did see some listed for like 20 25 but the condition has to be better for those. Uh, either way, I'm going to hang on to this one because I really, I really, first of all, I love the pattern, but secondly, I love their chocolate. They, they have just, uh, they do it well. I, I don't know what to say. In contrast, Russell Stover's, I don't like their chocolate. I don't know what it is. It's just not, not that great for me. Uh, at that same yard sale, I also bought my very first Pomander. This is for myself. I wanted to have this. I've, I've been wanting one of these for my bed, uh, for the closet. And so, I don't know. Now I need to figure out how you put something in it. I know you put it in the bottom, but what do you put in it? I don't really like potpourri. Maybe I can get like cedar chips or something. I don't know. Didn't really think that through. But it was a dollar and it's pretty. It's really pretty. Let me show you. There's just like blue flowers on it. Yeah, I mean, a dollar. I could have probably got it for less, but it's okay. It's really okay. Oh, 
And then we also got this here. This was 10 cents. So yeah, think about this. 10 cents and then a dollar for that. But uh, she had quite a lot of stuff that you could have picked from for 10 cents. Well, it was actually buy 10 for a dollar. And this was an item that I chose because Barb chose, I think, like nine other things out of that area. So this was one item that I, I went ahead and got. But it's this wonderful tree trunk with the mushrooms all over it. It's really pretty. I washed it out. It was kind of dirty whenever we saw it originally. But it's just a fun little planter. I think I'm going to stick this in the booth for about eight bucks. I don't... I hope that I don't have trouble with it selling for that. I, I think five to eight dollars is is the price that that would probably go for. Planters for me have always been sort of one of those things that they're tricky. They're like I don't think people are really using planters so much. So okay, so I did get the oh the rest of the tins. Now these were all. A doll, I mean, this. I paid one dollar and I got the fancy one that I showed you, and then all of these. Now, all of these are pretty much basic, these are great things for the booth. I'm thinking, even be, even though it has no pattern or anything on it, I can still put two dollars on it. I hope, and I don't know, you could do something cool with it stack them up in a corner, craft with it, lots of things. So, two dollars, we've got that one, and then we've got these two. Same kind of scenario. There's no real writing or anything on it. Except on this one it just says, Chase and Sandsburns teas are also delicious. Okay. And then we have a Dr. Price's cream baking powder. The most perfect. Not much of a label. That's the back of it, but there's no graphics or anything. So if I just put like $2 on each of these, I mean, that would be good for me. This one has no writing at all anywhere on it. This one is just like an old bakery tin. I believe it has like early settlers for the graphics. Yeah, like early, early American scenery. No real brand or anything on it except KC, oh, Kansas City. And then lastly, we have baking powder, Clapper, Clapper Girl, without the label. So, not a bad price. I mean, I got the one out of it for free, if you, wanna, if you wanna think of it that way. And then I'm sure I can sell, I'm sure. So then I also bought a selection of bottles, glass bottles. I don't know much about bottles, except that, like visually, if they look cool. I did immediately grab these two bottles of Mrs. Butterworth because she's synonymous. I just think she's just this great retro figure. We think of like the 50s and, well, 50s. <laughs> For me, I do. I, I think of that, that time frame, the 40s and the 50s. But these are from a little bit newer. And you can tell that because of the barcode, which is fine. It's still a great amber glass bottle. Sometimes people will remove the labels entirely. You could do that. And then I've also seen people who paint these. They hand paint the whole thing into different things completely. So uh, yeah, the older they are, the more desirable they are. And you can tell, obviously, if they don't have the barcode, that's one indicator of their age. But there's other telltale signs. They're made by Thatcher Glass. So um, I just know that because there's an embossed uh, logo on the bottom that says T with the uh, little insignia on either side. Anyways, I will sell each one of these in the booth for like $2.50. So there's like $5 right there and I paid a dollar for all of them. And then the other bottles that were included, this one's really fun. I love, I love the Art Deco lines. It was probably a coffee container. It's on the smaller side. What is that, like a quart or something? So really cool it would have maybe had paper labels on each one. Oh, here we go this is the smooth side so a paper label on that side and then we have this textured other sides this one's of a uh, native american right there i want that too it's kind of hard to see it's embossed this could be uh, like a liquor or something i don't know 
and it has a screw cap made to look like cork. So what do we think? Oh, this is log cabin syrup. <laughs> Duh. It says log cabin on the bottom. So yeah, that's a syrup container. Well, you think probably the 70s or so, late 60s. And then we have some just standard bottles that I just needed to fill things in. This one here, what if I put a dollar and a quarter, a dollar and a half on it? I don't know, maybe it'll sell in the booth. Now this one, however, is a Rexall container, so it might have a little bit more value to it. Being the brand name Rexall, there are collectors of that. Right there, you can see it's cursive script right in the middle, Rexall. So that's cool, and it says, uh, from the Rexall drugstore. Cool. And then this one, not sure what this one is, but I like I like the lines of like like a ripped kind of a bottom, and then we have what well, looks kind of like barbed wire or rope or so I'm getting sort of this country vibe out of it. It's made by Hazel Atlas. And then this one is just like a paneled. It's like a paneled jar. Don't know what that would have been. Also Hazel Atlas. And then I did get two milk glass containers. Maybe these were like cold creams or something. This one here has a little lid to it. No marking on the bottom. That's kind of nice. So there's that one. Small chip on the side. These aren't perfect, but I needed to meet my quota of 10 items. And then this one here is actually the same as the other, just bigger. Has the same pattern on it. Interesting. So yeah, we'll see what those do. I need to wash them up and they'll go in the booth. What will be going online is, out of everything I just showed you is the paperweights, the switch plate, the pencil sharpener, the butterflies, um, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, not a whole lot of online items right here. Mostly booth things and yeah. So uh, anyway, I mean, it's kind of a good assortment of different things. Hopefully you liked that and you watched the video that was, that was before this one about, about what we, um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, this is the debut of my Halloween backdrop, as you can see it right here. I'll insert a little footage maybe to the end of this video of close up of, so you can see what it looks like. But yeah, I had fun putting that together for Halloween. So anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.